Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm going to try something a little bit different this week, uh, a report uh, by means of video instead of a written report. And I'd like to start out by talking a little bit about the big picture. We're just coming off a hellacious week. I uh, feel like a survivor of the Bataan Death March with all that's been going on this week. Uh, we haven't had much to report in the last two weeks because there was a 10-day break, so I, I'm just reporting to you now on the actions that have occurred in the last week, a kind of a status update. Uh, in terms of big picture, though, um, big date to be watching now is April 19th. Any bill that has not passed out of the last, the, the finance committees, the money committees by that point, is pretty much dead for the session. We're in pretty good shape. We're positioned uh, where this isn't a, a concern for us now because we have time to, our bills are in either on, in a place where they on the floor or they're in, in committees that are still alive. Um, what's going to happen after the 19th of April is that there's going to be a major shift. The committees will ma both basically shut down except for the Rules Committee. And um, then we're going to go to com conference committees where differences between House and the Senate bills are worked out and also to uh, floor action. Uh, because we have one-party rule right now in Minnesota, I do not expect to have any kind of government shutdown or major bloodbath at the end of the session. I think that the differences between the House, the Senate, and the governor are such that they can be worked out. It won't be beautiful, but it won't be anything like we've uh, suffered through in the last uh, decade, basically, when you had divided government. I'm going to talk uh, only about the Senate right now because as part of this report, I interviewed Representative Rick Hansen earlier today and he's going to describe in some detail what's been happening in the House. First off, um, I'd like to talk about the bills that are, that are only the bills that are in play, and that would be to start with Senate File 786, uh, authored by Matt Schmidt. This one does not have a House companion file. It resides in Thomasoni's committee, and this is the one that contains the moratorium, the Sand Council, and, the, and provides for the development of very strong sta standards for uh, silica sand mining. Because it does not have a companion file, we're going to have to incorporate the provisions of this bill that are really important to us into some other legislation that's moving. The next bill, and a very important bill because it is alive in both the House and the Senate, is House File 906, carried by Hansen, in the House and the counterpart by uh, Senator Schmidt in, in the Senate. This is the one that, is, that does a number of things, including local, assisting local governments in the developing of t development of tough standards. This is where the EQB, uh, the PCA, and the Department of Health would create rules uh, pertaining to the emission of particulates and also reclamation. This bill could uh, travel alone or could be incorporated more likely into the omnibus uh, environment and agriculture bill. And that would be likely to happen in both bodies. The next bill that is of interest to us is uh, House File 1336 in the House and 1487 in the Senate, and this is carried by Hansen and Schmidt. And this is the Omnibus Game and Fish Bill. Part of our strategy is to have as many things going in as many places as we can uh, to maximize our opportunities and, and to keep our opponents as busy as possible. And that strategy has worked pretty well because uh, they have complained about how busy they are. Um, this bill would deal with driftless areas in southeast Minnesota. There could be no frac sand mining within one mile of a spring, uh, a groundwater seepage, a uh, trout stream, and there's several other uh, contingencies as well. Um, the second to the last bill I'm going to talk about is House File 1336, Hansen, 1487, Schmidt, and this has to do with taxes. Again, that was part of our strategy. And this has to do with taxes on extraction and processing. And uh, Representative Hansen is going to talk in just a minute, and he's going to describe in greater detail what that bill does, so I won't replicate what he has already said. This bill, I'm happy to report, has already been incorporated into the House Omnibus Tax Bill. It might be tweaked a little bit, but it's there, and um, that's a big accomplishment this week. The Senate version of it 
is likely to have a hearing uh, perhaps by this next Friday. And I'd like to encourage citizens from southeastern Minnesota to be at that hearing. Uh, we were great on the policy stuff, but we need to be strong on the tax issues as well. Um, last bill is Senate File 1586, Schmidt and a counterpart by Kelly in the House. It has to do with a private land sale in Goodhue County. I think this bill is fairly innocuous from what, what I've been told by uh, Senator Schmidt's staff person. Uh, I'll take another look at it, but um, I think it's going to be fine. Without further uh, discussion on my part, I'd like to yield the floor at this point to uh, Rick Hansen who's just done an outstanding job, as has Matt Schmidt, in advancing this legislation in a tough climate. Thank you. Uh, my name is Representative Rick Hansen. I represent South St. Paul, West St. Paul, Mendota Heights, Mendota, and Lilydale. Uh, and I've been in the legislature since 2004. I'm originally from a small town in southern Minnesota, Freeborn, Minnesota. I also served on the Dakota County Soil and Water Conservation District Board uh, from 1997 to 2005. I've been uh, working on the sand issue since last year. Uh, we actually had an amendment on the floor of the House. I think it was the first uh, silica sand um, amendment or bill uh, was on the floor of the Environment Policy Bill last year. And Representative Falk had uh, uh, authored that. And there was the first vote was taken last year on, I think, in either body on silica sand. We lost, of course, uh, uh, being in the minority at that time, but uh, have been working on the issue, trying to educate myself about uh, the issue, and have come up with a strategy of, of several bills moving through the legislature at this time. Uh, we, the first bill we introduced was uh, House File 425. That one uh, was looking at uh, protecting wellhead protection areas and scientific and natural areas in sand mining uh, regions from development. Uh, the second one in the House was House File 906, which has moved through uh, several committees and now is uh, in both the uh, Ways and Means Committee as a standalone bill and in the uh, Omnibus Environmental Finance Bill. Uh, that is the policy bill. Uh, when you look up House File 906 on the, on the House webpage, make sure you go to the second engrossment the second engrossment is the, uh, the latest version of the bill. So you can look up the bill number, see the authors, see the committees it's gone through, and then you can see the versions, and the second engrossment is the most recent version. The third bill is House File 1336, and that bill has, uh, was introduced. It's a tax bill, uh, so it goes directly to the tax committee. It was heard in the tax committee uh, and property tax division uh, a couple of weeks ago before the break. Uh, and then uh, was passed out of the property tax division this week. And we will be marking up what's called marking up the omnibus uh, tax bill uh, this weekend. And so you should see the final version of that included in a large omnibus tax bill uh, that will be, introduced, be released next week. The legislature is scheduled to uh, <coughs> adjourn probably about the 19th or 20th of May. So the next few weeks are going to be a sprint to the finish. Very long days, very long hours. Kind of the change will be going from committee work and drafting legislation to uh, floor debate, uh, meaning we will be in session as a whole House of Representatives and in the Senate they will be in session uh, debating these bills, uh, probably still modifying some of them somewhat, uh, and then passing the bills going to a conference committee, working out the differences between the House and the Senate, and hopefully getting a bill to the governor for, before signature, before we adjourn uh, for the year. House File 906 um, is a, a, a policy bill. It directs the Environmental Quality Board to establish criteria and standards for use by local governments. It establishes a library that local governments can uh, provide uh, um, examples of their ordinances and regulations so that uh, other communities don't have to reinvent the wheel. It also establishes a technical advisory team kind of modeled 
after uh, what has worked in Minnesota with our wetland evaluation, technical evaluation panels. Uh, so when what happens with wetlands is if there's a, a conflict, there's a technical evaluation panel of agency experts that can come in and, and work out those issues. What this would be is moving that technical advisory team on the front end of, of an issue. So when a local unit of government has uh, a sand uh, operation coming or they have an expansion or some questions, they can call in the experts from the, univer from the universities and the uh, uh, various agencies who might be able to provide assistance. So the local government asks for information. Uh, a technical advisory team is compiled by the Environmental Quality Board to assist the local units of government. In addition, it uh, directs the uh, Department of Natural Resources to develop rules on mitigation uh, for sand mining and the Department of, uh, Department of Health and Pollution Control, Agency, Pollution Control Agency to work on air quality standards. So you'll have some rulemaking in there. You have a variety of other um, standard setting and model ordinances and criteria to help those local governments address issues with silica sand mining. My experience, uh, my mother grew up in Fillmore County. I own farmland in Fillmore County, not where there's any uh, sand mines, but I'm familiar with the area. My background in uh, soils, uh, knowing the karst topography, the unique nature, uh, the, the, the unique natural areas uh, in southeastern Minnesota. Um, we have a lot of really precious areas uh, throughout our state. Uh, and southeastern Minnesota, because of its topography, because of its trout streams, because of uh, the beautiful area along the river and through the rivers and streams of the area, uh, it brings unique challenges. And so local governments, I believe, are having a have challenges trying to address uh, silica sand mining. House File 906 can help them and the citizens they represent uh, when these proposals come to town. The big challenge with House File 906 has been uh, resistance to the Environmental Quality Board, um, where some members have not wanted the Environmental Quality Board involved. Um, there has not been much support in the House of Representatives on a bipartisan basis for a moratorium. Um, the House has traditionally been very strong with local control, uh, whether the Republicans are in charge or whether the Democrats are in charge. Um, there's been a, a strong tradition of providing for local control. And so a statewide moratorium has had difficulty getting traction. Um, I think that the House has also taken a position that we want to try to solve the problem. Let's, let's make sure we can get, um, bring everything to bear. We're Minnesotans. We know that we can uh, resolve uh, problems and conflicts and let's see how we can work uh, to get things in place uh, right now in the legislature uh, to, to address some of the issues with silica sand mining. Uh, the generic environmental impact statement, personally, I've, I've been around long enough where I've seen two GISs uh, be involved, the generic environmental impact statement on feedlots and on forestry. Both took a long time and that at the end of the day, uh, while they were taking place, the debate was, out pro was about process and procedure rather than the problem. And in many times, the problem, the heat of the moment had passed. The problem was not necessarily resolved to many people's satisfaction, and we didn't move forward on addressing the problem uh, the way I think we could have. We spent a lot of time on process, procedure, and study rather than problem solving. I think we, we can problem solve right now. I think we have the ability to do that and we should be given that chance to make sure that we solve some of these problems. One of the issues and what I've said uh, for the last several months is that the private industry should pay for the public cost. And public cost comes a number of ways. It comes in transportation, it comes in air quality, it comes in mitigation, it comes in water quality, and it comes in water use. This is an industry that we have some of the best sand in the world, and it's needed for the oil and gas industry. There are other uses of silica sand as well, but the demand that is spurring this development is from the oil and gas industry that I believe has the ability to pay for the public costs 
of the extraction of Minnesota's natural resources. I think that we can work out an ability to have the private industry pay for the public costs and make sure that we have a quality of life, a quality of environment, and good paying jobs from now into the future, uh, rather than sacrificing any of those things in a rush to develop this resource. Well, in the House tax bill, uh, I've provided three options. One is kind of continuing the, the local aggregate silica tax. The dollars would go back to the county or the local units of government uh, where they can choose to cut, recover their costs. Currently, that tax is at 15 cents a ton. Uh, I provide the ability for it to go up to 30 cents a ton based on the locals' decision making. So again, local control. The locals could choose to uh, institute that tax or increase that tax. Another option I have is a, a, per, a flat fee per ton. It's currently at a, a dollar a ton for raw sand. Then that would go to the state to help pay for the state costs involved with permitting, monitoring, uh, etc. The third option is to have a fee on a tax on processed sand. Uh, a 3% across uh, gross sales of processed sand. Now that model is similar to what's there in the taconite processing that we've had in Minnesota before. So there's a choice, there's a menu of options here for raising revenue to recover the costs for paying for the public cost uh, in Minnesota. I'm not sure what the solution is gonna be, if it's gonna be a combination of all three, if it's gonna be one or two or all three, or some change or mix of those. Um, we'll be interested to see what happens in the Senate. The bill is moving forward in the House. We have been modifying and making changes to it as it's moved through the process based on input from citizens and from uh, local governments and from industry. Uh, but right now, it has all three of those options in the property tax division report that came out. Uh, we are a bicameral system. So we have the House and the Senate and ultimately the governor. The governor has put some of these uh, models of taxes into his budget. So we'll be looking at the Senate for what, they're, uh, what they will be doing on taxes. And again, within the next five to six weeks, we should have resolution on this to make sure we cover the, recover those public costs. Since we've come back from the break, I have not seen as much citizen involvement. I think as we've moved from the policy bills to the tax bills, uh, we had a lot of citizen involvement in the policy bills. Uh, it's been primarily the industry speaking on the tax bills. And I would encourage the citizenry to show up in these tax committees uh, because that's where the decision, the key decisions to pay for everything are going to be made here uh, in the next literally few days. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you.